Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to now show you how to make the most beautiful, simple and a delicious cauliflower dish. This roasted cauliflower on a bed of a cauliflower hummus, garnished with some pine nuts and some fresh herbs like coriander and a sprinkling of pomegranate. Very simple dish, a vegan dish. Stand by and learn this. You'll thank me for after that. We're going to first start by actually blitzing our cauliflower together. What I have here is uh, cauliflower florets, which I have basically blanched or rather cooked with some boiling water with some salt and turmeric. So that gives a wonderful kind of a yellow color to the dish. So I'm going to blitz that into my bowl. In this, I'm going to add some chickpeas. So it's very much a take on and hummus, but it's got a flavoring of uh, cauliflower. So generous amount of chickpeas to give it a nice kind of a base to the dish. And this I'm going to add a little garlic, a little salt. And what I'm also going to add is tahina, which is a sesame paste. Now I have shown the recipe in the past of how to make a tahina. I am using a ready-made tahina from the bottle. Uh, it just saves me a lot of time but if you want to make it at home it is a very simple recipe which i have used in the past and i've also shown it to you guys on my channel so sesame we'll pour a little oil and a little more sesame what i will also add is a generous drizzle of olive oil Now, if you want to make it spicy, you can add some green chili, you can add paprika, you can do whatever you feel like adding, you can add. Uh, I like to keep it quite simple, so it's just garlic, it is uh, sesame, it is chickpeas, and it's cauliflower. And once this is done, all I do is, I'm going to blitz it till it forms a nice smooth paste. So that's all gone in. Have a quick look. Ah, there you can see that. It's got nice and smooth, a little taste. Oh, yummy, it's quite nice. You got a very nice um, sesame flavor, but also got a very nice undertone of uh, cauliflower. In this, a generous squeeze of lemon juice. I mean, a citric really helps it come out better in flavor. I'm going to give it a quick whiz. The sesame is quite thick and so is the chickpeas. So if you think if it doesn't churn for any reason, you can always add a little water and uh, whip it through. Now, because this is a, a vegan dish, then there's no dairy in it. I could use water, but at home, you can also use uh, yogurt if you're okay. And you don't want to have vegan, you can add yogurt and whip it together and it'll work quite well. A little whiz now. So this is now ready. I'm going to keep this aside and I'm going to start with my cauliflower. I've got my cauliflower here and as you can see this is the center cut of a cauliflower. So from each cauliflower you will get one thick slice which is almost 3 4 inch uh, thick. So you have a whole cauliflower, the center cut is required for this dish. Now if you are just making one portion it is fine but if you have a large family to have to cook together and to eat then I would say do florets even that would work nice. But this as a tree of life it looks very nice. So visually, when it goes on to the table, uh, it looks quite nice from a guest point of view. So again, it resembles a tree, a tree of life, and the center cut of cauliflower is going to be the star of this uh, dish. Now, I'm going to add very simple flavors in it, keep it very, very light, and not overpower it with too many spices and masalas. So the first thing is going to be a good drizzle of olive oil. In this, I am going to Add some salt and I'm going to add paprika powder. Now this is smoked paprika powder but uh, you can use red chili powder, you can use a green chili if you like, you can add turmeric, you can add any spice powder which you like, it will work well. But don't add too much, it will really overpower or kill the dish. Also because this is going to be pan roasted or pan fried and goes in the oven to finish off. So don't add too much of powdered spices, otherwise it'll tend to burn and get cooked very fast. So just a little drizzle of the paprika. I'm going to massage that very gently. Let the flavor and the oil and the salt seep into the cauliflower florets. A little more salt and 
a little more paprika. Now this is smoked sweet paprika, so it's not very strong, it's not very intense, but just gives a very nice subtle flavor to the dish. Now this I will keep it for a good few minutes, say five or six minutes, to let the oil and the flavoring really seep into the cauliflower. And then I'm going to cook it into a pan and then in an oven. I have a pan here, which is a heavy pan, so it's a heavy bottom pan. Now the reason why you use a heavy bottom pan is because once you add in the oil and you cook your cauliflower, it retains heat quite well. If you have a very light bottom pan, then the oil gets too hot and it tends to burn very fast. This holds the heat. So even once you get the right temperature and you feel it is too heat, you can always lower down the heat and it will still maintain the kind of a medium heat level and not really burn the vegetables or if you're cooking fish or meat, it always works well. So always invest into a good pan, which is really going to help you get a very good product. So the pan is on heat, it's on medium heat. I'm not going to put any oil because I already have oil in a marinade for my cauliflower. If I need to, I can always add a little more afterwards. Again, don't want to get it too hot. This is just about right. Just going to slide my cauliflower into the pan and just drizzle off all the extra oil, the seasoning and the smoked paprika onto the cauliflower. So all I do now is on the medium heat, I begin to cook my cauliflower. So this becomes a nice kind of a goldenish color on each side and then it's going to be finished off in the oven. So as soon as the oil begins to get warm, it starts searing the sides. And you can actually begin to hear the sound of the sizzle, which tells you that it is beginning to cook now. I'm going to watch it on the sides just to make sure that it begins to get slightly golden and yellowish. And then I'm going to flip it over. At this stage, you are very tempted to actually stir the pan and to move the pan. Now, what that does is, you should avoid doing that in fact. Now, if you start stirring the pan and moving the pan, then all the, the parts which are being cooked and getting uh, brown or caramelized will leave the pan and it will not get perfectly evenly coated. So let it rest on its own heat. And then once it is beginning to have the right temperature and the cookness, cooking degree is done, then you can slightly saute it, but not till it becomes perfectly on each side. Now also as you cook, the aromas of the cooking come through. So you can begin to smell the cauliflower being roasted. You can begin to smell the paprika being cooked and it kind of uh, gives off the aromas and the whiff or the perfume of the food begins to come off and that tells you that it is cooking. Now again, have a quick look around here. You see it begins to brown on the edges. At this stage, I'm going to now flip it over. I cook on the second side. Just press that gently. I'm going to flip it over now. Let's have a quick look. And there you are. You see that? It's got a lovely brown on the edges little like a caramel color or a golden brown color. So that tells you, the aroma tells you that it's almost cooked and it is going to cook. Now because this is a thicker piece of cauliflower and I'm not pre-cooked it like I did for the hummus, the center of it is going to be pretty raw. So I'm going to cook it on the second side and once the second side gets equally caramelized and colored, I will then put it onto a tray or rather I might put the whole pan as it is into the oven, to let it cook and all the flavors will come through. So you just have to wait now. You see that the second side gets perfectly charred and brown. Now this just about smells right. I'm going to flip it on this side to see the second side. And you can see the second side is also almost done. At this stage, all I do is I switch off my heat, just press it down to make sure that it is evenly colored. And actually I'm going to transfer it into a roasting tray. Cauliflower has been half cooked. It is basically now ready to go in the oven. But before I put it back in the oven, I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of chili flakes. And a little lemon juice. Just a dash. And this goes into a preheated oven at 180 degrees centigrade or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 8 to 10 minutes till the cauliflower is perfectly cooked. So while the cauliflower cooks, I'm going to now make a garnish for the dish. Now that is based on all green leafy coriander. So I've got coriander here, I've got spring onion here, and I've got pomegranate. Now cauliflower on its own has got a very nice flavor. And once you add the spring onion, then you add 
the coriander, the dressing on top, it gives a kind of a very nice freshness to the dish. It also gives it a very nice color and the eye appeal. So a very simple one. All you do is roughly chopped coriander. Now you don't need to make it fine chops. Try and keep it as chunky as you can. You can even tear the coriander. Now I'm using coriander, but if you want to use uh, say basil or you want to use any of the herbs like sage, you know, feel free. It is your choice. Don't use anything which is very, very strong like a rosemary because that is too raw. You need something quite gentle. Coriander, mint, basil, sage. These work extremely well. A tiny bit of oregano can also do. Now, if you have a, a blend of these herbs, even a blend works extremely well. In this, I've also got a little spring onion greens. Now, again, as you can see, I have not cut them very finely. I've cut them into slightly bigger pieces because I want that crunch to come through. I want the kind of a coarseness or the kind of a rough texture, the garnish to just fall onto the dish. In this, I'm going to add a little bit of chili flakes for flavor and for seasoning. A little kick. I'm also going to add salt. Now, without salt, there is just no flavor in the food. A little squeeze of lemon because citric really helps the dish quite well. It brings it to life literally. And a little olive oil, just a drizzle of olive oil. And then just mix this together and keep it on the side. So when you have guests coming at home, you can actually make your hummus in advance and you can do your cauliflower in advance. And just as they come in, you can just warm up the cauliflower, add the hummus, add the uh, roasted cauliflower and a little green garnish and voila. What you get is a fantastic, beautiful, like a wonderful warm salad, which you can enjoy with your friends and family. Okay, now time to have a look. I must say this has taken a little longer than I had actually said. This has taken almost uh, 14 minutes or let's say 15 minutes to cook through all the way. 180 degrees centigrade, 350 degree Fahrenheit for approximately 14 to 15 minutes till the cauliflower is cooked. Let's have a little flip over. It is, see it begin to fall apart, means it tells you that the cauliflower is cooked. You see that? It's just breaking apart. Slightly al dente, just the way I like it. It needs a little seasoning. And I'm gonna squeeze in. A little more lemon juice to give it the kind of a zing, the citrusy flavor to the cauliflower. And you know what? I'm also going to add in a little more chili flakes. Again, handle with care. It is still nice and hot. I'm going to put it onto my table and get my serving plate out. So we have a serving plate here. And we're going to first spoon in our cauliflower sesame and chickpea. So it's a cauliflower hummus. You see that, look at that. How creamy is that? That is such a nice kind of a texture onto the center of the plate. Generous amount. Just swirl that over. Swirl that all done. And on top of that, now we're going to add the cauliflower. Remember our little salsa we made of fresh coriander, of spring onion, lemon juice and red chili flakes. I'm going to spoon all of that on top of the cauliflower. There we have it. And lastly, some kind of a zing and fruitiness really works well. So I've got pomegranate kernels. So it's going to sprinkle a few, quite a few kernels on top of that. And what I love is some kind of a nut or a little bit of kind of crunch onto the dish. And for that, I've got some toasted pine nuts. So toasted pine nuts on top. You can use almonds, you can use walnuts, you can use Brazilian nuts, you can do whatever nuts you like. Or if you have nut allergy, you can take nuts out all together. Again, a very simple dish, a vegan dish for all the vegan lovers out there is roasted cauliflower with a smoked paprika on a bed of a cauliflower hummus, a little salsa of fresh herbs of coriander, cilantro and spring onion and a sprinkling of pomegranate and roasted pine nuts with a little zing of lemon juice. Very simple flavors but beautifully done and delicious to eat. So make sure you make it for your friends and family and don't forget to tag me. So until next time, 
happy cooking